Hi everyone, uh, it's Natalie here with my third um, third tarot pulse. So um, today for my for my third tarot pulse, I chose the Morgan Greer tarot, um, which I'm really I love this tarot. <laughs> I really love this tarot. It is. Um, God, what a great deck. It's a beautiful deck um, in so many ways. The colors and just the the variety of color and the, uh, I mean, the image has, they have great clarity. And as you can see, like there's a lot of glare in here today um, because there's no sunlight. <laughs> it's a cloudy day in St. Louis. We just had some freezing rain last night and it's you know, it's February in St. Louis. What can you do? Um, but yeah, the, the cardstock is really, it's just delicious. Um, I could not be happier with this deck on every possible level. I love it so much. So I needed something after my first tarot pulse and second tarot pulse with Aquarian tarot that was going to be a little bit more earthy, um, maybe a little bit more fiery. So this really felt good, I have to say. Felt really, really grounding and calming in a really in a, and balancing. That's that's reasonable. So uh first card was five of wands. <laughs> five of wands. Second card, two of swords. Card number three, ace of pentacles. And card number four king of cups. So I really feel like this is kind of the representation of my internal state. Um, I don't have anyone that I'm working on a team with. Um, and I'm not, you know, team building is one of my favorite things to do, actually. Um, I'd like to say that that's one of my better skills, actually, is turning something that looks like a big mess um, into, you know, an eight of, an eight of wands or, um, a beautiful pentacle that can just spin and, or be stable and still and have a great structure to it. Um, so this is maybe more like a representation and I don't have any compete, you know, anybody that I'm competing with either. And I, I tend to sometimes look at this one as like competition, um, it's not a real battle. It's maybe an egotistical battle or, or a, um, you know, a battle of wills, um, is another way I've looked at this one before. Um, but this is more representative of like, you know, in psychology, especially like more depth psychology, the notion that we have different personality parts is what you know, and let's say that those different different personality parts serve different functions. Um, yeah, I mean, it, there. If you're interested in that, I, I'm just thinking like, hmm, maybe I should provide more information about it. But if you're interested in it, there is a system called internal family systems therapy, um, and I've spent a very long time working with it, and it's really extraordinary work. You know, it's taking those different, you know, parts of yourself that are, you know, different parts and facets of your ego structure, which don't always get along. And when they don't get along or when something's not working comfortably or easily, it can feel like you have a lot of internal turmoil. Oh, I just heard my kettle. I'm back with my, with my cup of tea. <laughs> my understanding, you know, of this and my experience of um, internal systems, you know, family, internal family systems therapy has been that when different aspects of myself and my ego, um, which I feel like is really well represented by, by the suit of wands, actually, when they're in conflict with one another over what should happen, what I should be doing, etc., and I'm not grounded in enough self energy, right? And in that tradition, which is not Buddhist at all, in fact, it was actually very challenging for me, um, to understand, you know, the difference, you know, between talking about self energy in IFS versus um, talking about the self 
and no self and those two concepts, which are very challenging um, to understand it all, right, for most of us um, in Buddhism. And then, you know, thankfully, the therapist that I've worked with is, <laughs> she's also a practitioner. So her ability to really help me delve into that and understand it better and be able to explain it in a way that I really get it uh, and and can then function and internalize and um, understand and gain insight has been very helpful. Um, when we talk about you know, self energy from the standpoint of, you know, Jungian psychology or depth psychology, which is very appropriate to a deck like this. Um, we're really talking about the core of who we are. You know, we're talking about the, you know, we're talking about the Buddha. We're talking about if we're, you know, we're going to go on a Buddhist um, angle with this. We're talking about you know, your, your own internal Buddha. So if I'm letting the Buddha speak through me, um, I'm hopefully channeling or, or being in touch with the core of who and what I am, right? The core self. From a more Western perspective, we could say it's like being in touch with um, that divine, you know, the divine spark within that is there, right? That if if we believe that there's a God, um, we could say that each human being is a divine aspect of God. So when you are tapping into, you know, what we're calling self energy, you're tapping into that most precious divine, you know, aspect of, of who you are. And it's... Um, it's the part of us that if we really allow that to be what takes over, right, or takes control, it has the ability to lead the rest of the ego and the ego parts into a place of harmony and balance. Okay, so when I saw this, I really couldn't, <laughs> I, I struggled with, you know, what, what does that mean? And then realized like, well, uh, you know, I think probably in the car on the way, you know, on the way there, because it was a nice long drive. This is about, you know, being in conflict internally. Um, and, you know, different parts of myself saying like, well, I'm just, I'm, um, you know, well, I have dukkha and suffering because I'm irritated and annoyed that this is happening in my environment. And, well, I have dukkha and suffering because, and dissatisfaction because um, this isn't done. Um, and, you know, they're disagreeing internally there, you know, the way we all do, right? This isn't about uh, having any kind of a form of mental illness. This is just the way that we are, right? We all have parts. We all have these, these little psychological aspects of ego. The next time you hear yourself say the words, you know, there's a part of me that, right, which we, we frequently do, that's what we're talking about, ultimately. And it's really helpful to get to know who are those parts? How old are they? Um, where do they, you know, when they're present, what do you feel or notice in your body? You know, these can be incredible ways of getting to know and understand yourself better. And the more then that you can work with compassion for those parts, rather than trying to isolate them, send them into exile, um, you know, put them in jail, put them in the bad camp, um, you know, in other words, putting them in shadow. Um, the more you can bring them into your life and love on them and accept their flaws, accept their, their difficulties by meeting their needs with empathy, the more chance, you know, any one of us has at feeling more harmonious and more calm and more centered. It will put you back in touch with your true self, right, in a depth psychology way, or with your, um, you know, with the Buddha within, or it gives control back over to that divine spark within. So um, that is, I think, the probably the better explanation of what I'm seeing here. So that gives me insight then into this, <laughs> right? So there's a need for balance, 
there's just a need for greater balance. And in order for me to find that balance, that means slowing down, coming back to breathing, coming back to being mindful, coming back to a place of empathy, acceptance, um, really stopping and, and, and going within. So, you know, if I have to pick something up and I can't put, if I can't put all of these things down, right, and all these parts are, are needing to pick something up and do something, if I want self to be back in charge, then, you know, coming back, I can't, well, I can never get these things to sort of be balanced and upright, haha. -ha. Um, if I want to come back to self, if I want to find and re, you know, restrike that balance, I need to literally pick something up, have it in my hand so that they're occupied, tune everything out, tune away from the senses, and go in. And I think it's interesting too for me that, you know, this reminds me a lot of um, the High Priestess card. The not so much the swords, but the two, like the, you know, it makes me think of the pillars. It also, you know, there's a moon up here in the, in the corner. Anytime I see crescent moons like that, even like last night, there was a crescent moon like this before all the clouds and, and snow and ice moved in. And it always makes me smile. You know, it puts me in a place of spaciousness, openness, hold all viewpoints with stillness, hold them with compassion with grace and they can all coexist it really is okay come into a space of um in tibetan buddhism we call it dharma datu it's it is this um full open space of total awareness acceptance compassion um discernment and the idea that everything has has the space to coexist and it's okay Right. So I need to come back to that. So that it was like a, a good, firm, you know, direction. Again, I'm back. Um, I've needed to take a few breaks because, um, again, bad weather and uh, artists and friends at the pottery studio that my partner teaches at and that I'm a member of. So I had to do some tasks and come back to shooting this. So we were at the Ace of Pentacles, so card number three. So card number three, Ace of Pentacles, feels, you know, after after Two of Swords, feels kind of like, okay, you know, when things are in, you know, here's a reason why it's okay to put things in balance. This card has everything in balance, right? Remember, everything is already in balance. Um, every element is present in the Ace of Pentacles already. So there's already uh, water, there's air, um, the sun is shining, that pentacle kind of feels like a sun. There's, there's, it's very fiery, um, it's very balanced. Uh, and that kind of balance is what introduces you know, material balance, you know, balance the mind and balance in materiality becomes possible. I really was happy to see this one because to me, um, from a fortune telling perspective, which admittedly, I, when I first started tarot, I don't know what in the 90s, um, that was really in part how I was coming to it. I was approaching it in part from that place you know, there, that, that some kind of material, um, you know, some money making, some prosperity, you know, has, it, there's potential for it. There's potential for it. So if you're starting a new business for yourself to get an ace of, of pentacles feels really auspicious, um, and kind of comforting and encouraging. So to sum up, it feels kind of like, you know, hey, all of the elements are in balance, when you place the elements in balance in your mind, you know, do, as above, so below, and so on, which are pretty universal um, concepts, you know, what you put in balance in your mind helps you harmonize and balance in material reality as well. So we have this. Um, and also just a new venture, um, new possibilities for prosperity, which is great. Uh, new beginnings. Um, and finally, the King of Cups. 
which felt kind of um, very affirmative, very, very affirmative. Um, the King of Cups brings a lot of balance in in a storm. <laughs> the King of Cups is, you know, this is a very gentle, very benevolent leader who is heart-centered and heart-focused. And, um, you know, even though you can see, especially in this card, and I pulled out my Rider Waite, um, you know, or my, my Pamela, I like calling it the Pamela Smith deck in my head. And then what I come out with verbally, I'm still saying Rider Waite Smith, even though mentally I'm going the Pamela Smith deck. Um, so our friend Pixie shows a, a, you know, a slightly different viewpoint or perspective on our King of Cups. You know, he's surrounded by the ocean. There's water everywhere. His foot is right next to the water and it's choppy. You know, you, oh, whoops, wrong side. You can see clearly here, even there's a fish jumping out of the water in the back. You know, there's a lot of stuff going on in that card. Um, and in the water, there's a lot of emotion. There's a lot of, um, you know, he's literally, there is a flood of emotion and yet he remains calm. He remains stable. He remains still, you know, and then we get the, the filmic, uh, close up of what that might be like, you know, in the Morgan Greer deck, which I think is lovely. Um, and even there, he's still very calm, very relaxed, really capable, capable of moving forward. Um, but also of just, well, actually he doesn't, what am I saying moving forward? He can't go anywhere <laughs> without being soaked. But even in the midst of being surrounded by water and, and, you know, turmoil in a place where he can't move, um, he's still calm. He's still stable there. You know, he's still finding that space of Dharma Datu and, ease despite being surrounded by by all the water um you know in this one there's a ship which gives me a sense that and he's on a platform interestingly but there's a ship which gives me a sense that he doesn't have to stay out there he's not stuck in other words if he needed to get out he could it would be possible but um it's his choice you know, it's his choice to be in the middle, in the thick of it. So, I don't know. I'm not, I'm not 100% sure. Again, court cards are easily my weakest area in the tarot. I feel very confident with the majors and, and minors, but, but um, court cards have, uh, they've always, you know, they've, there are so many ways that people read them and I've never given the court cards adequate boundaries personally. And that's something I am actually working on right now. Um, and as such, I'm leaving, I've decided I'm just leaving that interpretation open. I'm not reading for, for paying clients yet. Um, and I'm really still deciding whether that's something I actually want to do or not. I've been reading for um, friends and um, friends and fellow artists, <laughs> the ones who are willing and, and who let me. And it's been very enlightening. And it's shown me a lot about the areas where I really need more work um, and, and to kind of brush things up. But as I recall, the court cards were eluded me in my 20s as well. I, I really, mm, not as much as maybe I'm thinking they did. I think in my 20s, I, I would I would get insight during a reading but they would kind of put everything in the reading on hold. You know, they'd kind of stump me for a minute and being able to get rid of that stumping would be nice. So it's good that court cards are coming up in, in my tarot pulses because I need to work on them. So that's my tarot pulse for today or actually technically for yesterday. So I'll have one later today. I'm feeling today like it will probably either be my mother piece mini round tarot, which I'm only just learning or it will be the Indigo Alchemist Tarot. So it'll be one or the other of these two. Um, I might go with Indigo, actually I think I will. I think I'll go today with Indigo Alchemist because Indigo Alchemist is so straightforward and so honest. So, and there's not a whole lot of um, 
space in there's not as much space in the cards as there is in other decks. So if you're getting to this part, I've done a lot of editing to get here because um, I kept getting interrupted and sometimes that is just how it is. All right, back to updating text messages and finding out about whether everyone I love and care about is safe on the roads. All right, take care. Thank you for watching. Bye.